<laughs> yeah. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, good morning, you guys. Glad you guys are all here. Why don't you guys grab a Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 21. And uh, we're going to be reading a lot of Proverbs. They're going to be up on the screen. But, but if you want to hang out in your scriptures, uh, that, that'd be awesome. Uh, we are uh, in our series, Unnatural. You know, in, in today's age, it's natural to, to have financial issues. It's, it's natural to have uh, people issues and to struggle. And it's natural to uh, be depressed and all these different things. But God has called us to do the unnatural, to have a heart that beats differently and does things differently. And so as we continue in on this, uh, we're just going to look at what God wants for us. And, and first off, I need to talk about the elephant kind of in the room. You guys are all sitting on brand new seats. And and you guys saw the you guys saw the the lobby got done and our youth our youth room has got finished. So when we launched uh, Authentic Life Church, so if you don't know this, we're a little over three years old. And when we launched, we had this launch team about uh, two hundred people. And we in three weeks, not three months, not three years, in three weeks we raised three hundred thousand dollars in order to yeah in order to make room. And get everything ready for the next generation for a bunch of people. And these people were all sacrificial. That's how we were able to do this awesome stage and put two baptismals in here. That's how we were able to make uh, the painting all the different rooms and do things and do our children's ministry. And so we've always had it that we get some chairs in here that we could finish the foyer uh, to make it just more inviting. And then to get that youth room all put together. And so we were able to, uh, the, your elders released the funds and were able to do that. And so, but how we were able to do that is a lot of you guys know Robert Bramble. You know, he's our head, one of our head greeters, and uh, he has Big Bear Flooring. So he owns a flooring company. Well, he, for months, sat at his computer every morning to see if he could find some what's called overruns, which means that, like, a company was doing the floor for the hotel, and then they have overruns, and so it gets really, really cheap. And so he, for months and months, was sitting there trying to do this to save us tens of thousands of dollars. You heard that correctly. And that's what he did, and his company put this in, and his generosity is just unbelievable. Unnatural, really, is what it is. Somebody who cares so much about the church that he's getting up every morning and doing these different things, and so it's awesome. <clears throat> and, and another cool thing I just need to tell you, last weekend, uh, starting Sunday night through Monday, the, the youth had a concert down at, at Clement Park, and they had, went to Elitch's, and they had hundreds of kids throughout the overnighter and different things like that. And then Friday was our very first uh, Fun Friday, uh, yeah, right, Fun Friday, and, and, and Fun Friday, and there was 172 kids came to that. <laughs> On Friday night. And so God's just done some fun things. I just love when, when just God does great things. Well, today we're going to look at everybody's favorite subject. If I was to name a subject that everybody cannot wait for the church to talk about, what do you think it would be? Math. Our finances. And so we're going to look at that. It, it's normal in today's age to sit down and get into debt and get into all kinds of problems. But God has a plan. He has scriptures that really talk about how to have a, a better financial fitting. And, and really the reality is when we're heading towards recession, when we're going to the gas pumps and we're running into all these things, uh, my wife and I just, you know, were just talking a little while ago about what, you know, what are people going to be able to do? And so I thought this would be a good topic in our series on un, unnatural to be able to, to go into this. So I'm different than my wife. I'm extremely frugal. I'm naturally frugal. Uh, I always had savings. I always didn't spend a lot. It doesn't really take a lot to entertain me, you know, all this different stuff. Well, then, you know how opposites attract. And so I marry my wife, and she's not just opposite. She's like polar. Like, if it, you know, she's the one that sits down and goes... Uh, uh, I go, honey, we have no more money. She goes, how could that be? Because we still have checks in our checkbook. You know, uh, that type of person and, and spending and, and, oh, you know, whatever. And so we've had some conflict, especially in our early years of, of marriage. Uh, it was just like we were poor. I was in seminary. We hardly had any money when we got married. Uh, then we became youth pastors in Los Angeles, high cost of living and yet low pay as a youth pastor. And so we, we got into debt. Uh, pretty quick. We actually, our son Bryce, when he was a little kid, 
his baby teeth all rotted out. It's a rare thing, but man, he was having all these problems. So we instantly accrued like 10,000 in debt. And, and how do you get out of that? How do you crawl out of that? And it took some years and some lots of hard work to be able to do that. But we learned some practices. And so we, we really, I, most of what I'm going to be saying today are just things that we've learned. There's a, a, a guy named Dave Ramsey, if you ever heard of Financial Peace University. And, and uh, we've gone through the class that, that it's like six weeks twice, and it just really helped us. And so I want to pass a lot of that on today. And especially you young people, just learn these things now because it gets tougher later, later on. So how many of you, raise your hands, how many of you have ever done something foolish or stupid? Just raise your hand if you've ever done something foolish. Okay, okay. how many who did not raise your hands have a problem with lying? Uh, yeah. How many of you have done something foolish with money? Yeah, we have. Here's, a, here's our first key point, uh, key, key thought. If you do something foolish with money, it usually costs you money. If you do something foolish with money, it usually costs you money. So Wall Street Journal uh, said 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Okay? And we have a 52% divorce rate in America. 52%. Guess what? 90%. Of those that got divorced within the first seven years of their marriage said the number one issue was their financial finances and debt. 90% of all divorces that, that, within the first seven years said their debt and their finances were their number one issue. So this is something that we need to fix. We need to get healthier on these things. And, and, and we should. So before we go any further, let me open this up, up this time in prayer. Father, thank you so much for being a good God, and thank you that you talk about every subject, sex and our finances and eternal life and, and hell and everything you talk about. So we need to be able to pay attention to these things, and you want our hearts to be differently, and you want us to be different uh, than the rest of the world. And so we just pray for this time. Would we be good listeners? Would I be a good preacher? Would you be glorified? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the heart of this sermon is really that which I said. I think it's tough out there. Um, uh, I, I can tell you that Melissa and I haven't always done everything great or right, uh, but we, we figured out how to do these things, and I really want to pass them on well. Uh, one of the things is, is that we're all serving something. Uh, we're either serving God or we're serving uh, the government or we're serving ourselves or, or whatever. And Jesus speaks to this, and he says this in Matthew uh, 6, 24, he says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be despised by the, you, sorry, not be despised. You will despise, uh, sorry, you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, why does he say this? Because he knows that money is what often most of us actually serve. We are serving our money or we're having it such an insatiable desire. So something's mastering you. And for many of us, it's MasterCard. And, and God knows that this will always be this little debate that's going on within us. And we need to be able to get this right and to do things right. So another key thought, personal finance is 80% behavior and 20% uh, knowledge. So I'm going to try to pass on the knowledge, but it's up to you to change the behavior, right? And it's mostly our financial situations are about our behavioral issues when it comes to this. And, when, and, and why Jesus talks about this is because he realizes that he wants his church and his kingdom to be glorified. And he uses his people in so many different ways. And so a question that you've heard before, you know, if you were to open up your checkbook or people, somebody looked at your financial picture, what would it say about your devotion to God? Now, I know that's convicting. But if you were to look at your financial planning, your finances, your checkbook, what would it say about your devotion to God? Because you can only serve one master, Jesus says. And you will, will not, and he calls it despising uh, the other. So I have six unnatural 
yet godly principles that we're going to go through. Six unnatural yet godly principles that we're going to go through today. And because, remember, Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. And so we know we're going against the flow. We know we're doing something different than what, what everybody else is doing. And so, but he's called us to do that, to have our hearts beat differently. So here's, if you're taking notes, which I would encourage, uh, here's your first one. We all need a written game plan. We all need a written game plan. Or maybe another way of putting that is a budget. I know that's a dreaded B word. Budget. Yeah. You know, Melissa and I tried hard not to ever have a budget. And every time it gets us in trouble. And you need to have a budget. So many of us are not doing that. So let's look at our scripture in Proverbs 21. And we're going to start with verse 4. It says, haughty eyes and a proud heart, the unplowed field of the wicked produce sin. Now let me explain that. Haughty is like that you, you look down on others and you look down on things or even look down on God. That you have so much pride that you don't think you need to do things God's way. And he calls this the unplowed field or another word would be the unexamined life. That you go through life without being examining, without placing it underneath the authority of God. And then verse 5, he says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Look at that again. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So many of us look at life through the rearview mirror instead of the windshield. And budgets are planning ahead. Instead of kind of going, what do I do? How did I get in this spot? You know, how did I get in trouble? No, we want to plan ahead. You can find a, 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 a budget planning on, uh, you know, Dave Ramsey. I already told you about him. But if you want, it, it's called RamseySolutions.com, and it's all free. You can go RamseySolutions.com, and you can go on there, and you can just click budget. And it'll give you various budget forms based on where you are in life. You know, and you can fill in the blanks and do that. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's interesting when you look through a proper budget plans, things that you don't think about. And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I do spend money on that. I should probably plan it. And, and you can do that and find that. There's all kinds of things you can get on that website that are good. Another proverb is Proverbs 16, verse 3. It says this, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. I, for one, want God in every aspect of my life. I want him in my marriage. I want him in my sex life. I want him in my financial planning. I want him in uh, uh, the way I raise my kids. I want God to be in every part of that. And so he says when he's a part of it, blessings will happen. And I, for one, want my finances to be blessed. I mean, don't you? Why would you go through life and go, you know, this is the one area, God, I don't want you to have anything, any say in. That doesn't make sense. Because it's actually what money makes the world go around. And, and so it's something that we really need to be thinking about. So that's the first one. The second one is of our six unnatural yet godly principles. The second one is learn to act your wage. Learn to act your wage. So not only should we budget properly, but we should act our wage. In other words, don't live beyond your means. But guess what? The majority of Americans live beyond their means. It's just natural. 70% of Americans actually live paycheck to paycheck, which means they have not put any cushions in their, their life or in their finances, and they live paycheck to paycheck. And yet we live in the richest culture in the richest time period, and yet most of us never think we have enough. Believe it or not, you might be living paycheck to paycheck and you go, I'm poor. No, not necessarily. It, it, take you to some other countries, we'll show you poor. You know, but we run paycheck to paycheck because we go beyond our wage. That's why, usually, is we have bad habits. Proverbs 21, 20 says this. The wise store up choice food and olive oil. In other words, they save. But fools gulp theirs down. Now, I looked up this word fool. It's not a good thing, you know. It's not like, like hey, fool. <laughs> what up? You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a greeting. It, 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 it means fool. And when God calls you foolish. And to be honest, Melissa and I have had many times in, in our 35 years of marriage that we have been foolish with our finances. I mean, we've always been tithers. We've always done 10% or more. 
but we still got ourselves in some debt issues that are just for foolish reasons. You know, some of it, we couldn't help it with our son and stuff, but we, we still could have, maybe if we had better planning. And so we need to act our wage. So if, if it's, is it easy to live on less than you make? No, it's not. Let's just admit it. I'm not asking, I'm not bringing something to you that's easy to do. It's unnatural. But we are called to live unnaturally and to live right uh, for lots of good reason. So our first two are budget and act your wage. Uh, number three uh, of our principles of six godly, un unnatural yet godly principles, number three is this, discover the power of saving money. You know, for much of, of our marriage, we didn't really save money. We, we just couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, you know, and, it, it, and sometimes it wasn't necessarily a priority. But studies show that, man, saving money needs to be a priority. Proverbs 21.20 again says, The wise, I'd rather be wise than to be called a fool by God, right? The wise store up choice food and olive oil. So my wife and I wanted to instill this principle into our kids. And so uh, when they were young, uh, we, we did the 10, 10, and 80 rule. Have you ever heard of that? We, we had them, so we give them their $5 allowance, and, and, and that's like when they're really young, and they would put 50 cents, I think that's 10%, uh, uh, into a jar that was for tithing, to giving to the church, and then 50 cents for savings, and then they had the other, whatever, that $4 that they got to live on. And then we, ra we actually raised them up to like $20, and they put $2 in and $2. And they just were committed to this. And Melissa would drive them to the bank, and they put their money in the bank account. And I can say, I can stand here very clearly and say, both my kids are really good at saving. They, 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 they really try hard, and I'm proud of them, because that's not something that na it comes naturally, you know. But you need to learn to save. It's just important. For years, Mel and I didn't have a savings account, and so if all of a sudden our tires went bald and we had to get new tires, what do you do? You charge it. it and, and, and for many of us, it's just, well, yeah, that's, that's what you do. If you want to get a TV, you charge it on a Best Buy card. Yeah, but wouldn't it be better not to do it that way? Wouldn't it be better if you had savings. And so now we finally have savings. And now when an emergency happens, it's not a big big deal. You know, we're able to, to cover that. So I'm not saying it's easy. I know this is unnatural. But hopefully, if you take these principles, you're going to go, yeah, that's, that's a good, smart thing to do. So number four is see yourself as God's money manager. I think this principle is so important, to see yourself as God's money manager. So look at these, look at these verses. Uh, Psalm 24.1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including you, including your finances, including your dog. You know, even if it, your dog, what is it, a couple months old, Brundages, you have a little dog? Nine weeks. Nine weeks. A little pea factory. <laughs> but it's not yours. It's the Lord's. So, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Great verse. Everything is mine, God says. Your kids, you might think they're yours. They're mine. So place them in, in, in my hands. You see your finances? That's not yours. They're mine. Here's another. He goes in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. With everything you are, honor God. I know it's not easy and it's unnatural. But it's essential to, to give everything to the Lord. So if everything's his and he owns everything, then what does that make me? That makes me his manager. I am making sure that I can go and stand before the Lord and say, I did what you called me to do. I gave where you called me to give. I loved where you called me to love. I served the way you called me to serve. I did all these. I worshiped the way you called me to worship. So, hey, Lord, I am your manager to do with the things that you've given me. That's important to do, you know, and, and be his money manager. Uh, let's take us as a church. Um, so I talk about it, but, our, you know, our food bank. So we have the, one of the largest uh, faith-based food banks in all of Denver Metro, okay? We feed over 1,000 people a week. Awesome. Boom. Okay, now, we inherited that when we came in here and launched, when we, when, you know, we merged with CFAN and, and uh, some people that were meeting, and we all got together. But we decided, as a group even, that we're going to be a church of generosity. 
that we were not going to let, we were going to always be generous. And so that means, and, and so many people in here, we have kids that are in Togo, Africa. You know, we have uh, uh, from Compassion International that we're sponsoring. We, we have missionaries all around the world that we invest in. We have planted churches in, in, in Eastern Europe. You know, we just give the money. We take care of, we buy things for, our, our, we have our Authentic Life Girls Home in India. That's our girls home that gets kids out of sex trafficking and all this different stuff. And it's just amazing. And we do the same thing here. And I firmly believe, I absolutely believe, one of the reasons why we are so blessed as a church and why we've been growing so fast as a church is because of that food bank. We inherited the food bank. You know, it, it's been going on for 20 years. But because we're taking care of widows and the poor, like Scripture tells us to do, I have no doubt that God is blessing us as a church, you know, uh, because he says, you're doing what I'm calling you to do. You're managing things well. So as a church that's basing its principles on generosity and that we're going to pour in, that we're blessed to be a blessing, then guess what? God will bring more blessing. That makes sense to you, doesn't it? You kind of go, yeah, I guess if the church is really blessing, God's going to fill it. He's going to bring people there. Well, wouldn't that make the same sense to you in your own personal finances? God wants to bless you. But if you're only hoarding and not managing his money right, then why would he want to bless you? Right? So let's go on to, that was too convicting. So let's go on to number five. Do whatever it takes to get out of debt. I mean, at least consumer debt, because sometimes home debt, that's, that's kind of good, you know, you get those things. But consumer debt, do whatever it takes to get out of debt. Proverbs 22, 7 says this, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. I don't want to be a slave to anybody. But when I have credit card debt, there is a sense to where it puts an arm behind my back. You know, all of a sudden I'm... I'm I'm now captive a little bit. And so do whatever it takes to get out of debt. Um, Forbes magazine, they, they talked to 400 of the richest people in the world. And uh, when asked the question, what's the best way to get rich? 75% said, get out of debt. That's the best way. That because we are always in consumer debt, we never get the financial capabilities of doing other things. And so here's these rich people that are saying, that's the number one thing. Clear this out. So I know it's, I know it's hard. I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's easy. But, you know, uh, Dave Ramsey has a thing called the snowball effect or a rollover plan. And, and it, it works like this. It's pretty simple. But it, it's, it's interesting. And it really helped my wife and I because it goes against what you naturally think. And he goes, let's say you have $5,000 on MasterCard. Okay. And that's your biggest card, most debt you have. The majority of us, what we do is we, we go, okay, that's what I have to take care of first. Well, Dave Ramsey says, no, do, do this. So let's say you have a $5,000 MasterCard, and you have $500 on your Target card and $200 on your Best Buy card. He goes, first pay off your Best Buy card. Do the minimal on the other ones, and then maybe do an extra 100 on the Best Buy. As soon as you got, so in two months, you paid it off. Now take that same $100 and add it to what you're paying your Target card, $30 a month. Now you have $130. And then you clear that off in five months. And then now you'll have that $130 plus what you're doing on your MasterCard. And then you can get that off quicker. It's called a rollover plan or a snowball plan. And, and it works. And, and, but you can also go to RamseySolutions.com uh, to get that. I'm not trying to sell Dave Ramsey. It's just he's a guru. Some of you guys even listen to his, his on the iPod and Nobody has iPods anymore, but, um, but, but, um, and, and, and so, but, but it, it's free on there and it just helps you get these things. And so I remember what I told you, it's 20% knowledge, it's 80% behavior. So it's up to you if you want to change the behavior. But I, I think for your sake and the kingdom's sake, that is a good thing to do. Let's go to number six, um, grow in generosity and begin to enjoy the act of giving. The next unnatural principle, and I'm telling you it's unnatural, is to grow in generosity and begin to enjoy the act of giving. You know, um, my, my wife and I are very, very different um, in, in these things, but, but I've never met, and I can say this, never met anybody as generous as my wife. 
She is generous in so many ways with her time, with her efforts. She bakes things for people. She delivers. She helps people. She picks people up, up that are walking in the rain. And she just does all that stuff. And so there's a couple things that I wish I was more like my wife. I wish, you know, I was generous like her, more generous like her. The other one, I'd like, I'd, I'd like her hair. Um, that would be the other one. Maybe a third one is tan like her. If you watch her, she just like looks at the sun and changes colors. You know, it's just amazing. But, but, but generosity is a big deal. Look at, look at Matthew 6, 21 says this. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. See, this is what's called the treasure principle. Where the tre- your treasure is, your heart is also. Makes sense. See, if, if, you're, if you're spending your money on, on uh, you know, Bitcoin or whatever, you're always going to be paying attention to wh- whatever it's worth. If you're, if you're caring all about your, your financial future and, and all about your retirement funds, I, I bet you you're, you're clicking on things and looking at it. But if you care about the church and you care about God and those things, then you're going to be more like Robert and waking up every single day, clicking and trying to find the best deals so, so that great things could happen for the kingdom. You know, if, if it, where your treasure is, your heart follows. If your money is in some missionary, I guarantee you, you're caring more about what's going on with that missionary. If you're giving to, to India and the girls' home, then you're caring about what's happening over there. And if you're financially invested in the church and stuff, then you're caring about what's going on in the church. That just makes sense. So, you know, again, if somebody was to look at your checkbook, if they were looking at your things, what would it say about your love relationship with God? And again, I know that's, that's convicting, but it is a good thing. Yes, my wife is a spender, but she's also a generous person. And, and so it made us, we're, we're basically 15 percenters, so we're kind of like that 15 percent and then five for savings. And we just decided to live like that. And we think I'm a funnel, and I'm blessed to be a blessing. And God blesses those who are blessings. Um, and he blesses all of us anyway, but he extra blesses those who are blessing. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. What first fruits mean? It's that first money. You don't give what's left over. You don't tip God. You, you give up at the front end. And that's what that is. And I know some people kind of go, well, the Old Testament is only where it talks about tithing 10%. Uh, you tell me anywhere that you found Jesus preaching less he gives us grace is the only difference. But he always expected more. You heard that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, I say, you know, turn the other cheek. You heard that uh, it's wrong to murder. Well, I tell you, even if you cuss at somebody, that's as bad as work. He always made it even, you know, greater. And so you might have this question. Pastor, okay, I am in debt. And what do I do? And I feel conviction. And I, I need to be giving. Well, there's two basic principles. One of them is that you just come to something. I'm going to give half percent uh, to, to ministry. Or I'm going to give one percent. And then as the future grows, as I get out of debt, uh, then I, I promise the Lord I'm going to go to two percent. And, and if you do this, I'm going to you know, go to three percent. That's, that's one thought. Uh, another one, more, a little bit more where I lean, is that, uh, hey, how can I ask God to bless my finances and to bless me getting out of debt if I'm not? Uh, involved in the kingdom things. So we've always still been tithing even while we were trying to get out of debt. Uh, but both, both work, both are good, um, and that's up to you. Again, giving you the knowledge, um, it's up to you to, to, to change some things. Uh, there's a book, you heard me talk about Treasure Principle. I'm going to say, apart from the Bible and a couple other books like Purpose Driven Life, this book, Treasure Principle, has been the most uh, influential in, in my life. It was so freeing. And just learning these principles. And so we have this book. It's out there in the foyer. And we have it for you. But, you know, it costs $8, but we're giving it to you free. But only grab it if you're going to read it. Don't grab it because you're thinking Bruce is looking around and seeing who's taking it. You know, uh, if you're not going to read it, don't grab it. But if you're sitting there going, okay, I want to read a book like that. I want to change some things. Then please pick that up. You know, we got it for you. And so it's treasure principle. So I'm going to close with this. It's unnatural. Our natural tendency is to hoard and have everything about ourselves and to fight for me and not anybody else.
But man, if you notice, Christianity is all about other people. It's all about serving. It's all about loving. It's all about giving. It's all about worship. Everything's off of ourselves. And so I know we're asking you through this series to do things that are unnatural. But that's a good thing. Because natural is not working. Selfishness is not working. We're watching a culture that's getting more and more selfish. And it's not working. And it, 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 we got to be a church that is different and, and bring glory to him. Amen? Hey, next week is Father's Day. Woo-hoo! Yeah, yeah. You know, mother, I mentioned Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming up. Everyone's like, yay! Father's Day, we get one whoop-whoop and uh, come on. Hey, it's a great day. I know you might have daddy issues. You might have daddy issues, but don't take it out on me, okay? Uh, hey, uh, but uh, here's the cool thing. We have, we have root beer floats that we give out uh, for free next week and, and all that stuff, kind of fun. Hey, but here's another cool thing is we're going to have baptisms next week. And so what a great, if you have not been baptized, uh, man, on Father's Day, sit there and go, Heavenly Father, I'm taking the plunge for you. You know, Happy Father's Day. It's me. And so if you'd like to do that, sign up either online or you can grab a card right here and say, I want to get baptized. And I'm, I'll call you up this week and uh, get baptized next week. Pretty, pretty, pretty fun. Well, I'm going to close this in prayer. Um, I know this is a little different type of sermon, but, but hopefully even when there's wrestling, that it's a good wrestling uh, as we go in there. But God wants us to have a heart of generosity and he wants us to not live like the rest of the world uh, and, and live in debt that strangles us and destroys our marriages. He, he wants us to have freedom in Christ, and that means all of the gospel, all of it. So let's pray. Father, thank you for um, drawing us here today, and we do want to give you glory in every aspect of our life. Um, we realize that in some of these things, we, we still want to have a, a, a control. And yet we realize that when we're trying to control everything, more often than not, we're actually out of control. And so we lift this up, even our finances, to you, oh God. And, and I want to ask you, raise your hand, saying, saying God, I'm, I'm convicted and I realize that my financial picture literally needs to be underneath your authority. If you're saying that's true of you, that you want to do that, could you lift up your hand and say, I'm gonna, I want God to be a part of my finances. Father, there's a bunch of us with our hands up and we just ask you to bless, bless and teach and change those of us that have our hands up. We realize that we could be misusing uh, what you've given. We're mismanaging. And so we want to lay that before you. Uh, thank you for this conviction. Go ahead and put your hands down. And then I know this wasn't necessarily a gospel presentation, but if you're saying today you'd like to receive Jesus as Savior, um, could you just lift up your hand saying today, I want Jesus in my life. I, I, I want him, and I'm going to pray for you right there in your seat. Saying today is my day of salvation. Okay, I'm going to pray the prayer in case somebody was afraid to lift their hand or, or they're online, but, but join me in this. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you as my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you because you gave your life for me. Thank you for canceling my debt by dying on the cross for me. I accept you now. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen, amen, amen.